now that we're familiar with the factors that affect legitimacy we'll go into our next topic which is sovereignty what did i say sovereignty what is sovereignty i'm sure that we have all heard the word sovereignty what does it mean to be sovereign so sovereignty may be defined as the absolute power of the state to exercise supreme legal authority over its own affairs within within its territory without any form of external control take nigeria for example we have our absolute power so therefore americans cannot come or america cannot come with its own uh, uh, government to try and control the affairs of nigeria that is not possible because we are sovereign we have absolute power so sovereign means absolute power so let's take it again sovereignty may be defined as the absolute power of the state to exercise supreme legal authority over its own affair within its territory without any form of external control now we're also made to know that Jean Boyden introduced sovereignty to political theory. Jean Boyden, he introduced that uh, uh, theory. Now that we're familiar with the definition of sovereignty, we're going to be moving on to the next topic, which is the characteristics of sovereignty. What did I say? Characteristics of sovereignty. Now, there are five characteristics of sovereignty. And number one is absoluteness. Now, the modern sovereign state issues others which are binding on all citizen and association with the territory and receives orders from no one or none. That means for, for a state to be seen as sovereign, it should have the uh, ability or it should be able to give orders and not uh, receive orders. It should be able to give orders to its jurisdiction. It should, able, it should be able to enforce some rules and regulation and should not be able, and the, the, it should not be, be enforced by an external force. Now that is absoluteness. The second characteristics of sovereignty is permanence, permanence. Now, sovereignty is permanent as long as the state exists. Now, for a state that is in existence, it automatically is sovereign, except it is not free from external control. So, characteristic and permanence is another characteristic of sovereignty. Now, the third um, characteristic of sovereignty is indivisibility the powers of sovereignty which are supreme absolute final and coercive, cannot be divided or shared now looking at the word indivisibility we can we can bring out the word divide from it so in other words uh, uh, another characteristic of a sovereign state is that it, the powers cannot be shared or div divided it is absolute it is final it is it is what it is now for a state to be deemed a sovereign the powers of uh, the, the the powers of sovereignty cannot be divided now look at the fourth uh, characteristics of sovereignty now the fourth characteristics of sovereignty is comprehensiveness I'm sure that we can understand what the term comprehensive means. The power of sovereignty is wide in scope and, and, and all embracing, which is binding on persons or groups within the territorial jurisdictions. That means it is wide. It is it, 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 for a state to be sovereign, it has a lot. It takes a lot. It has a lot binding it is just not one it, it cuts across different scopes 
Now, the fifth and the final characteristics of sovereignty is absence of foreign control. No state that has foreign control is regarded as a sovereign state. You have to be independent and free from uh, control, free from uh, other uh, countries to give their own um, say or have a say in your political or governing affairs. So there is absence of foreign control in a sovereign state. The power of a sovereign state is supreme within its territorial jurisdictions, jurisdictions without any foreign uh, control. And I think that is very uh, explanatory. I mean, absence, it does not include, does not have uh, external bodies interfering in their, um, in their decision. That is that. Now that we now understand uh, the definition of sovereignty and we have looked into the uh, characteristics of sovereignty, we're going to move on to the next slide. Now that we're familiar with the characteristics of sovereignty, we'll take into consideration the types of sovereignty. I'm sure you now understand that what the term sovereign means. For a state to be sovereign, it is regarded as absolute. Now, there are five types of sovereignty. Now we'll take the first one, the legal sovereignty. This is the power to make and enforce laws in a given state. Now, the word there is the power. It's more like a right because the constitution clearly states what power it can exercise. So legal sovereignty is gotten from the constitution because it has been stated there, it has been stated, the functions have been clearly stated on, on what and what the uh, states can, um, can enforce. The second type of sovereignty is a political sovereignty. This type of sovereignty has to do with people exercising their political power or right through the ballot box by voting for those they want to delegate to power. Now, the third type of sovereignty is the de facto sovereignty. Now, this type of sovereignty is a sovereignty acquired by force, e.g. and force ruling council by General Ibrahim Babangida. I'm sure that we're all very familiar with history and we know um, how General Ibrahim Babangida enforced a, a de facto, uh, de facto uh, power on the citizen. So de facto has to do with force. And like I said, anything that has to do with force has to do with the military. And you know that, uh, and you can clearly see that General Ibrahim Babangida was a military man. The fourth type of sovereignty is called the de jure sovereignty. This sovereignty is acquired in accordance with the laws of the land as against the use of force. Remember that I earlier explained what the de facto uh, sovereignty is. Now, the de facto and de jure are synonymous to one another. While one makes use of force, the other doesn't. One is, uh, one is legitimate while the other isn't so legitimate. So the de jure sovereignty is the sovereignty acquired in accordance with the laws of the land as against the use of force. Of force. Now, the fifth type of sovereignty is the internal sovereignty. What do we mean by internal sovereignty? This is the supreme power of the state to make and enforce laws within its territorial area of jurisdictions. So this is the supreme power of the state. Now, remember I said for um, a, a sovereign state is one that has supreme power that is absolute. Now, the state itself has that power to make and enforce laws within its territorial area of jurisdiction. Remember I said within. So the, the, the state cannot, cannot uh, influence the decision of other countries but within his own jurisdiction, within his own country. So that is that about the five types of sovereignty that there is. Now that we are familiar with the types 
of sovereignty. We'll look at the locations of sovereignty in a state. As we all know that there are different types of governments and at this, in each of this type of government, uh, sovereignty is located in different positions. Now, we we'll look at the location of sovereignty, some of, uh, of these types of governments. Number one, we have in a unitary government. In a un unitary system of government, it is possible to locate sovereignty in the central government authority now a unitary system of government means power is conferred to only one source as the word implies unitary it's just one power is located in one place so a unitary system of government has its sovereignty located in in the central government or authority now we look at the second location of sovereignty in a federal state in a federal state of government sovereign power is located or is shared between the central and state government unlike the unitary government that is confined to just one location the federal system has its sovereignty shared between the central and state government now we look at the third location of sovereignty we have uh, it's in we have sovereignty located in the electorate and i'll tell you how you know as a citizen it is my right or my duty to take part in active politics by means of election during an election as a citizen you are expected to vote and that's where pass to vote in and vote out candidate of your choice is now we or you and i as an electorate or a yeah as an electorate we have that power to uh choose who we want and according to uh professor av dicey power or sovereignty can be located in the electorate that means we have the right we have the absolute power to decide on who gets into power and who doesn't now the fourth uh, location of sovereignty in a state is in the monarch. I'm sure that the word monarch is very, very, uh, uh, very familiar with uh, quite a number of you. Uh, the word monarch has to do with royalty. Now, in Britain, we we'll take for example, sovereignty can be located in the Queen in Parliament. In Britain, they 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 operate a monarch system, and therefore the Queen has the sovereignty she has the absolute power in the parliamentary now we'll now take another location of sovereignty which is in the military regime we all know what the military regime stands for which is force exactly so the power of the afrc is supreme or unlimited and it's act as as uh it acts as both the executive and legislative organ of government you know the military um regime powers are bestowed to the military government and it's usually by force they they are the one that exercise both executive and legislative uh functions in the state so now that we're familiar with the locations of sovereignty in a state will go further in looking at the limitations to the sovereignty of the state exactly we will be looking at the limitations to the sovereignty of a state now we have one one of the limitations to the sovereignty of the state is membership of international organizations the existence of international organizations, which many nations belong, to, belong, has placed serious limitations to the sovereignty of such nations, e.g. the UNO and the ECOWAS. We are aware that UNO and ECOWAS have their own rules and regulation, and some of this country, because they're part of this organization, have to, um, ha they have some of their powers limited due to the, the the restrictions or the rules that these organizations have 
So when you are a member of some certain organization as a country, or when a, a country is a member of a certain organization, they restrict some of the activities or some of the affairs of the government. Now, the second limitation to the sovereignty of the state can be as a result of the influence of powerful nations. And I'm sure that we're aware of some of these powerful nations. Can you mention some? Exactly. We have United States of America, we have United Kingdom, we have China, we have Japan, we have Russia. So these countries have powerful, uh, they have world power and they can influence to an extent uh, the decisions of some, some sovereign states. Now, powerful nations like USA and Russia have a lot of influence on external sovereignty of the smaller and weaker nations. I think we all clearly understand what I'm trying to say. If uh, you hold a certain power, you can influence as a country, you can influence a weaker uh, country. So that is, I think that explains what I'm trying to say. Now, the third limitations to the sovereignty of a state is the electorate. You and I, as a citizen of the country, are regarded as electorate. And it is our duty to put in who we feel we want or who has done great in office. So the electorate can check the excesses of the government through elections. It's through elections you know the, the, the uh, country's um, uh, approved candidate or government. So now, another limitation to the uh, sovereignty of a state is the type of governmental power. Now, sovereignty is best exercised under a unitary government than in a federal and confederal system. I'll explain why. In a unitary government, powers are conferred to only one source. Powers are not shared. Unlike the federal and confederal system where powers are delegated to other sub uh, subcategories in a nation, when power is given only one source that source has the right to dictate and give rules but when power is shared there is a process and which might not be favorable to a government that needs uh, urgent and exercise of power so that is why it is best that sovereignty is best is exercised under a unitary government now we also have customs and traditions. The custom and tradition of the people impose serious limitation on the sovereignty of the state. Just like in Nigeria now, where we have diverse culture and diverse uh, religious uh, belief, uh, there are some certain governments and policies that uh, some customs and traditions frown against. So therefore, some certain uh, customs and tradition also limits the sovereignty of a state. Now that we are familiar with the limitation to the sovereignty of a state, we've come to the end of the lecture. We've gone through sovereignty, the types of sovereignty, the characteristics of sovereignty, and I hope that you gained enough knowledge on what there is to know on sovereignty. Thank you, and I hope to see you in our next like the class don't forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel have a great day